What's happening, everyone? Got an update for today. Uh, it's December, actually the beginning of, and been getting a lot of work done here on the layout. So you can see, I got all the track laid. Pretty much all the power ran to it, and able to run trains now, which is nice because uh, the previous layout before this actually was only running narrow gauge. I hadn't brought my uh, standard gauge stuff out. So it'd been almost a year since I've run all the standard gauge and luckily everything has survived pretty well. I mean, there's a little stuff knocked off here and there and same with the buildings. There's a little couple things broken here and there, but overall not in bad shape. Um, so you can just kind of get a 360 here of how the layouts run. And then I've just got the lift out bridge here. You kind of see the uh, hardware that was used here. Um, I got this idea of the model railroad forum. And then this is the type of latches I used before. It's the window sash lock. And so this is the, there's a matching half on the, the actual lift out itself. And then it just, all you do is you drop it in, it drops into place. And then the locking latches just pull it down and help it stay aligned. And then the track, like I've done before, um, just use the copper strips. And then this side, I uh, use these re-railers. Uh, and there's also re-railers over on this side too. And then power is just fed through a plug. I did this on my last data gauge layout for the lift out and it works pretty well. So over here, um, this uh, last time I actually had these buildings set here, but uh, now I've got them set up and I, I wanted to get a little elevation to help uh, just give it some depth and something I haven't really done before. And then here's the lumber down here. Um, as far as all this over here, this is all pretty much going to be concrete. There's going to be a roadway crossing right here, like a four or five lane, kind of a major intersection going across. Um, this area, I have not decided whether to do it elevated or not. So that's something, I don't know if you guys have any opinions on that. Um, so then it, this is, it's basically just a circle, pretty, uh, pretty plain. I didn't have a lot of area to work with here just because of the configuration of the garage. So, um, I'm more into running trains than doing like ops and that kind of stuff. So usually I'll be out here just building something and put the trains and run them for a while. So the track here comes and then follows around over here and then just switches out just for storage. Um, and then there's a switch over here. And then that takes it along here and then just, just dead ends over here. And that was just to give storage. And then I might put some, uh, you know, some sort of like businesses or something along here to kind of fill that space in. Um, and then I got all the buildings out of, uh, out of the boxes and storage. So, and this is kind of just a rough idea of how everything's can get laid out. And then down under here is all the, uh, electronics. The layout 
it's all the same stuff. It's a SB3, I think it's an A booster with a five amp power supply. Uh, and then I've got the uh, NCE, the, it's not the circuit breaker, but it's the lamp fuse. So if there's a short, uh, it illuminates. And then you can see, this is how I did it on the last layout too, is all the power is on the outside here. And then the fascia will cover all this up. And then just using these uh, WAGO uh, connectors for everything. If you don't use these, these things are great. Even just to do tests for uh, hooking up circuits. They're quick, easy. Uh, and I mean, it holds all different wires, sizes. So uh, I, like I said, highly recommend it, because, especially when you're first doing a layout. Um, if you wire something wrong or there's a short, you can just undo these and get access and uh, troubleshoot real quick. Uh, and I hate soldering underneath all this. Uh, and the soldering works. It's just, it's such a pain. And then these are the blocks I bought off Amazon. I also have blocks that are uh, for the wiring. And I showed this in my last video for all the buildings. Actually, not my last video, a couple videos ago on my other layout. So these are, uh, they take 12 volt and they knock it down to 3 volts. Um, and then they're adjustable so you can actually tune the power. So then I supply all my LED lights and everything for the buildings with these. Because I have a separate power supply just for uh, this type of stuff. And there's even a little uh, jumper here that you can take off and make it. Uh, your on off switch, which I'm going to do. So all the lights, I didn't do this before, but all the lights will come on and off with switches for all the buildings. So they're not on and they shouldn't really be on in certain areas like exterior lights and such. Um, and just, I've mainly just been cleaning and organizing and trying to get stuff set up. So you can see my workbench is pretty set up. And then just got the monitor here. Same thing, I just, with all the Unistrut, it makes it so easy to put stuff up. Um, one of the other projects I did was this here. It's a SN3. It's a Railmaster. Get some light on it. Um, it's a little giant. So I wasn't looking for this, but I got such a good deal on eBay. I end up buying it and it only took like a week to build. It was pretty quick uh, and it uses a Kato NW2 drivetrain. So it runs really well. Um, I even did, it's got a removable roof and then it's just got like a little, it's not an accurate interior. It's just kind of a mock interior just so it gives you something to look at as you're uh, looking at the locomotive. But it's going to have sound. I just haven't bought the sound for it. it. It does have a decoder in it, so I have been running it. Um, so the SP Little Giant number one, and this is all sourced from the uh, internet and a good friend of mine. They actually sold this to a mining company. It was narrow gauge. I later found out they converted it back to standard gauge. Uh, and this is how it was painted at the, uh, it was a mine down in a, uh, Mexico. So I want to do something different, a little more modern, because uh, I'm doing modern SN3 as far as like uh, between the Durango and uh, Silverton and uh, the Cumbras and Toltec. So that, uh, hopefully I'll have that done, put some sound in it. But I'm not really, I haven't been in too big of a rush just because I don't have any SN3 up and running yet so um, I still haven't really come up with a track plan it's not going to be anything super great this again area is going to be Chama as before um, so you can see over there there's a station and then I still got to build a lift out here so once I get to the track then I'll build the lift out but um, I've just been doing other projects. Um, 
Oh, and then I redid my uh, paint rack here. It was further back. I didn't like it because when I'd pull this out, you'd have to go underneath to look for paint on one side. So now you can pull it out, get to it from both sides, which is nice. Uh, that's huge, having all your paint organized. And then the laser, been using that a ton. Just doing other projects other than train stuff. I've been building signs and other stuff for people. So, um, yeah, it's slowly getting there. Um, I still have to wire the rest of the power to those uh, this the yard over there. Uh, but that's quick and easy. I already have the block over there for it. And then just got to start in on the uh, SN3. And then the SN3, like I did on the last layout, because SN3 flex track is hard to get. I still have some left, but uh, I bought all the jigs for the fast track and a bunch of rail and a bunch more of the PCB ties. And then in earlier videos, I was making my own tie uh, sets out of acrylic. It actually worked really well. Um, my last layout before I tore out with this, Ran super smooth, so I'm really happy with it. It's cheap and easy to make. You know, you can make a stick in like 10 minutes. So I'll be doing that again. So I, I need to start building more uh, track and then start coming up with the design. So um, as you can see, there are wires hanging underneath because eventually I am going to put lighting. I just put this temporary lighting that's like the ceiling lights up underneath just to kind of see how it would light up. Um, so I'm probably gonna do just the LED strip lights and maybe put like the diffuser or something over it. Anyways, thought I would just give a quick update, uh, show you what I've been up to. See ya.